Hi guys, welcome back to another unboxing and review video. So up today we have two of the new Mega Constructs Master of the Universe sets. So on the left we have the the new five, the collaborative five uh, figure pack uh, from the Heroes line. These figures were initially released uh, through the like the Mega Constructs Heroes lines one through three. Uh, which include Faker, Beast Man, He Man, Skeletor, and Tila. And then on the right, we have the new Wind Raider construction set. So both sets were found at my local Walmart. Uh, they both retailed separately for $19.99, uh, which is a pretty good deal when looking at the five pack because these figures, when they were initially released, uh, they were each $4.99. Uh, so the first thing we'll take a look at, we'll take a look at the packaging. So um, as you can see in front of you, this is the five pack we have. Like I said, Faker, Beastman, He-Man, Skeletor, and Tila. And these are the figures that uh, they're the same prints, same uh, equipment uh, as the initial releases uh, when they were released individually through that Heroes line. On the back side, we have some really nice comic art of the Masters of the Universe. Apologize for that glare. On the bottom, we see just another kind of picture of that Wind Raider also in the line. Um, for the Wind Raider, to get a little bit closer up, really nice display art. Uh, I'm not sure about this, but I'm pretty sure Mattel actually had, um, they ended up hiring, I think one of the original comic book artists for He-Man to actually, or like the Master of the Universe to do the display art, at least that's what I've been told. Uh, on the back side, we see again, just kind of a quicker look at that Wind Raider once it's built up. On the top right, we see some of the features such as the wings and uh, the rudder can go up and down, side to side, and then also our anchor can come out and then back in. And another He-Man and Skeletor on the right. So uh, I guess the first thing that we'll take, just kind of talk about is the differences between the two sets. So on the left side, these figures, like I said, these were the ones that were uh, initially released and they have not changed. So the, the paint decal, everything on them, is if you take them out of the package, you can't tell the difference between whether or not you got it in the Heroes line or whether you got it in this five pack. On the right, however, that's a little bit different. So we'll take a look just close up at all the figures first before we get into that. So this is Faker. Faker comes with a power sword and a battle ax. He does have, as you can tell, the chest armor is you know similar. It's the same as He-Man, uh, but you know he is an android. And so you can kind of see under this, and it's extremely difficult to get off his chest armor but you can see um his his i guess that like his uh robotic parts and all that kind of stuff underneath on his chest so he's a really nice figure um again you know i didn't pick him up through the heroes line i wasn't like a huge faker fan so i did pass on the um wave three model of him again with beast man uh, this is kind of a peg warmer you can still find these from series two at most of your stores uh, at least in my neck of the woods you can. One thing I will say though, although he's not that popular of a figure, the paint decal and also the new pieces that they included for him are really, really nice. I mean, all like the, the build up around his shoulder armor and his neck armor, it's all new molds. It's really nice. It's a very good detail. Um, the paint decal also on his chest armor as well, it looks really nice. And then also up onto his face as well. I mean, it's just, it's, a very good job, especially for the scale being 128. They did a really good job with these figures. Of course, everyone's favorite, uh, He-Man. So he comes with his power sword and also his shield. Now, again, this is the same exact mold, the same exact layout that what he got initially from that Heroes Series 1 um, packaging and also inclusion. So very nice decal, very nice decal on his uh, chest armor across his belt, his boots, although they are just, you know, single molded, you can see the straps across and it's just very nice. Uh, face decal on this guy. So when I was looking at trying to pick these up, I noticed that probably the, one of the more annoying parts about the He-Mans and the sets is that you can see there's kind of a, um, like it's, looks like they used a little bit either too much white uh, for the back of the eyes or that their mold is slightly off because you can kind of see that his pupils or the you know, white portions, it's painted more to the right. So and you can see on his right eye, it carries over across the center of his face towards his nose and that left eye carries more to the left side of his face. Not a huge deal, uh, you know, for me, not a deal breaker, but it is frustrating seeing those kind of minor uh, issues for uh, figures. So Skeletor here looks very clean, comes with his Havoc staff. Um, 
really nice armor decal on him. Uh, really nice paint application on his chest armor. It's all, uh, you know, rubberish material for his clothing. Uh, he also comes with the same, I guess, um, what's it called? Harness for his chest armor. So if he were to get a power sword and you get a power sword for him in the Wind Raider, you can slot it in that set. So then you can have the Havoc Staff and the power sword. Um, so that's pretty nice. I think one of the important details about this guy, so in my opinion, they actually did a better job with the original release Skeletor uh, than they did with the Wind Raider set. And so as you can see, you, he's got his leg gauntlets uh, on both his right and left legs area. And then you have exposed feet for uh, his, you know, in normal skin tone color for him. Now, when looking at the Wind Raider version of it, that is actually, that's changed. So I don't know if it's either um, that they've gotten lazier with it or what's going on with that. Uh, probably my favorite uh, decoration for any Mega Constructs you know, figure to date has got to be Tila. Tila and Evil Evil Lynn as well. They both did a phenomenal job with their female characters. So I mean, you can see on her chest armor, on her lower torso, her legs, her boots. You've got dual molding throughout the entire thing. It's really crisp. It's really clean. They did a really good job uh, with this figure. <clears throat> excuse me even on that you know the exposed back portion right there you see you know the, the white fur coming across it doesn't look sloppy it's a very nice decal they did a very phenomenal job again probably one of my the important things for me too is like you know I, the the face mold to make sure that you know the paint isn't running off they did a phenomenal job with her eyes i mean they did the the black eye like eyeliner around her eyes they did do the pinhole eyes which i'm not a fan of but then they did you know the white pupils back so at a distance, you can't really even tell those aren't painted eyes. So in my opinion, I think this is a great way that Mega has started to do their figures. Um, if this continues, I'd be okay with it if it's gonna be that level of detail. Um, and again, I'm, a, I'm a, more of a COD collector, like a Call of Duty collector, and the differences between Halo, COD, and then also the Heroes line is that the Heroes and Halo lines, they have started to use pinhole eyes. Uh, recently they have been doing the white backing, so it doesn't look as terrible, but on some of their earlier figures that they were doing just the pinhole eyes, it, it just didn't look good. It, uh, I get the idea behind it, but it wasn't executed very well. Uh, so probably the most important thing of the set or out of the, <laughs> the two sets right here is the Wind Raider. So the Wind Raider, uh, was a, in the comic or the comic books and also the cartoons, it was a powerful jet propelled aircraft had photon cannons, it could hold up to five people. This model, the scale does not do that. It holds one figure. As you can see, you've got He-Man in the cockpit. And I can say compared to like even the classics line of Masters of the Universe, I think this is probably more to scale for the figures. It's a very tight fit. So for He-Man right there, as you can see, even with his hands, it's they're not you know quite able to get in there. It's a very tight fit for your figures. Uh, I haven't tried to get either Beast Man or Skeletor in there. I don't know if you're going to have the clearance for that uh, because of their feet. Uh, so that's something to kind of keep in mind for the uh, the Wind Raider, and that's you know, and I guess that's kind of how the uh, you know the Wind Raider goes because this was a you know a man made or a man operated aircraft. It wasn't made for the bad guys. Um, so both wings go up and down, which is really nice. They move uh, freely of one another. The rudder in the back just swings from left to right. It doesn't, there are built up uh, like fins on these, but these are uh, pegged into place on two different, you know, sets of studs. So they do not move uh, <coughs> up and down. Uh, one of the other really nice details about this is so in the jet propelled portions, they Mega has included some of like a uh, newer style of uh, flame that they've included in here for the jets. So it's really nice extra detail for the jets uh, to look, you know, that it's actually in midair. It looks really nice. One of the um, play features for the Wind Raider is the, you know, the anchor that comes off. And so this was just like the original one, uh, you know, the anchor was able to shoot off. And then as you can see, it's kind of gotten caught a little bit. Um, it'll shoot off and it'll come back and then you can uh, kind of crank it back in to get it to go. So the string on it's about eight inches. Um, one thing I will say that has been really difficult about with this is so with you setting this model up 
I might be able to take this off from right here. So everything is very tight into this hole right here. And as you can see, I had to uh, tie a very small knot and then I actually had to use a lighter to get it to be as small as possible for that clearance because while it rounds over across, it's still only held up by two rods. So you can continue to spin this and it's not going to tighten the rope up anymore given the fact that the, you know, the, either the knot's caught or, you know, what have you. So that's probably one of my biggest gripes about how this system is set up for releasing the anchor and then also kind of winding it in. If you are lucky with it, like, and I, it was a little bit of modding to get it to do uh, as freely as it was for me. It wasn't an easy task um, with trying to get the knot as literally as tiny as possible so it would clear both the left and right sides of the hole. Uh, it's not too bad. It was, you know, I think more than anything, the attention to detail from the original Classics line was very important for, uh, you know, mega constructs to kind of hold up to that line. And they do a really good job about this. I mean, the, the Wind Raider itself, it's in its natural colors. It's got a lot of really nice printed decals. So all the decals on this set are printed onto the, uh, the studs and the pieces. There's no stickers, which I'm always a fan of. I hate the stickers. Uh, the color, you know, variants are accurate to both the cartoon and also, um, the classics line. So I think at a whole, they did a phenomenal job with the Wind Raider as well as the, the figures. So, uh, if you guys watch my other videos, probably my biggest gripe with, uh, Mega with these last few years is the, uh, I would say the quality of figures has kind of gone down. And what I mean by that in their Call of Duty line They've used uh, kind of a, a weaker type of plastic, so the figures are more susceptible to breaking. Um, the, it, the the plastic for the ball joints on the heads, it's there's there's just been more issues than I've had uh, in previous years. Uh, with that being said, I had to say with these figures, I'm not seeing any of those issues. So I think again, they with having the heroes line, they always do the extra you know detail with the figures. It's premium plastics. You're paying premium dollar for these figures as, you know, if you were buying them individually, they'd be $5 a piece as opposed to, you know, where this, you're getting two figures, the vehicle and everything would be $20. There is, you know, a difference, but with paying for that, like high quality of figures, they definitely have represented with that. And the figures are in really good condition. Uh, you know, I would have to say I would absolutely re recommend this. You know, even if you're not a Master of the Universe fan, this is just a phenomenal job of what Meg is doing, and Meg is listening to their community. So the entire reason why the Heroes line was created was what fans wanted. Uh, and, you know, and within that, you know, the Master of the Universe has such a cult following. Like, you know, like it's a cult classic, so it's got a huge following. Um, and so, you know, you see the classics line that have come out. They're still producing you know, figures, you know, the vintage figures themselves, they're still selling. I mean, it's, Masters of the Universe is a, a force to be reckoned with. And what's really nice about uh, Mega listing their fans, they've been able to recreate um, like these figures similar to the classics line. And what I mean by that is by uh, body proportions, how the figures look, they look more realistic than the vintage line. They're accurate to the cartoon. It's, an absolute amazing job what they're doing with this. Uh, with that being said, you know, if you guys are kind of up on Mega Constructs news, Toys, Toy Fair is coming up within this next week. Uh, and there have been leaks that they are going to do a Castle Grayskull. So if you are a, you know, a Motu fan, it's one of those things where, you know, you've got more things coming from Mega Constructs. So definitely support them. I think this is great. And again, with this is, you know, they're listening to their fans of what we want. All right, so the Call of Duty line is still going. It's still very popular. There's not a lot of, um, I guess, press with that, but they are still releasing figures and sets throughout the year. So that's good news. Uh, same with the, you know, their Halo line is very strong. Uh, but this is nice to see them do another line like this to get more fans into their product. You know, over the years, they've had Assassin's Creed that kind of dropped off. They've done Terminator sets, didn't do very well. Their TMNT line that they did from, you know, like the um, original, like the classics line didn't do very well. So all of those lines have kind of gotten dropped. But the two that have been kind of very prominent are the Call of Duty and the Halo line. Uh, with that being said, with them including the Pro Builder sets as well as the Heroes lines, it's gotten very popular. And so, you know, hopefully uh, we will see them continue, especially with having those Hero lines get popular. Certain figures are obviously more popular than other figures. 
Uh, for example, in the Halo Heroes Series 1 line, you saw a lot of the Alien and the Colonial Marines, and so Omega has announced that they're going to do similar to this with the five pack, they're going to do an Aliens uh, figure pack. So that'll be really cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to be included in that. Uh, hopefully they're going to do another, uh, like another, you know, Colonial Marine or a different style of that. Um, but anyways, guys, uh, getting a little bit off topic, the important things about this are, you know, I would definitely say if you are a Motu fan, definitely pick them up. If you're looking at trying to get one set or the over, I like other, I would definitely say probably the, the Wind Raider is better bang for your buck if you don't mind the differences of quality, right? So on this Skeletor right here, we again see they've gotten a little bit lazier with the paint application. They haven't given it the same justice as, you know, the Skeletor that came in the uh, the five pack or through the Halo Heroes or the Mega Constructs Heroes line. But with very minimal, you know, differences like that, uh, I would definitely say probably if you're going to do one or the other, go for the Wind Raider. It's a really nice vehicle. You're getting He-Man and you're getting Skeletor, which are two of the main popular characters. And then if you are continuing with the line, they have announced that with Castle Grayskull, Man-at-Arms, Tila, Beastman are going to be included in uh, Skeletor and He-Man. We haven't seen picture art for Skeletor and He-Man, so hopefully if we get lucky, we're going to get like a, a battle-damaged He-Man. But again, that's all speculation. With that, guys, I'm going to end the video, uh, but definitely have to recommend this. Um, if you guys are new, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I do a lot of these uh, review videos, but again, with Mattel and the distribution, it really just depends on when I'm able to get a hold of these. So bear with me. Uh, again, you know the easiest way that you guys don't miss a video is make sure you hit that bell so you get notified every single time I got a new video. Uh, without that, guys, I'll catch you next time. Bye.